They are 55% of registered voters and registered a turnout of 62%, well above the national average. Now, and they do this because women are community builders, playing a vital role in all sectors of society, even when their contributions are not always recognized or appreciated. Indeed, women bear the brunt of poverty and violence in our society as well. As we craft our contributions towards the program of the seventh administration, we must ensure that we make decisive progress towards the empowerment of women and also to truly have a non-sexist South Africa. Together as the Alliance, we must confront the fact that our economy has barely grown over the last 14 years. Between 2010 and 2024, the average annual GDP growth rate was 1.2% a year. Now this is anemic growth. This was lower than the rate of population growth over that period. What this means is that per capita GDP has been declining over the last decade and a half. That is why we say that inclusive growth must be our apex priority. This is necessary to create employment, to reduce poverty, and to reduce inequality as well. As Alliance partners, we are determined that growth must be inclusive. It must be transformational as well. Inclusive growth must drive the redistribution of wealth and opportunity in our country. It must support the empowerment of black South Africans and women, and all those who in the past had been relegated to the fringes of the economy of our country. We must continue to protect and uphold hard-won rights of workers and continually strive to improve the conditions in which they work and they live. Inclusive growth demands that we affirm the position of women and youth in the economy and enable the full participation of people with disabilities and other vulnerable groups in our economy. We have demonstrated the value of public and social employment in creating immediate work and livelihood opportunities. Over the next three days, we must plan to ensure that these programs are massified and become more effective. We're going to have to come up with innovative ideas of how our job creation processes and initiatives can be massified as we cannot continue having so many South Africans unemployed. Much work has been done in creating conditions for greater investment in infrastructure, improving mechanisms for planning, financing, and implementation. Over the past five years, a lot of work has been done in putting in place capabilities to enable us to be more investment friendly and be able to attract investment so as to push ahead, particularly with investment in infrastructure. But we need to massify, to massively rather increase the scale of investment, particularly in a number of sectors of our economy, and particularly in the new sectors of our economy, the green economy, the hydrogen economy, in agriculture, yes, in mining, those are areas that are becoming 
frontiers of growth, the digital economy as well. We need to pay greater attention to infrastructure maintenance. We have worked with stakeholders, including business and organized labor, to develop master plans in important sectors of the economy, focusing on the actions needed to enhance growth in the respective industries, increased investment, creation of jobs, and faster transformation. At this Lekhota, we need to assess the efficacy of the master plans that we have now put in place and the contribution <clears throat> that they are making to industrialization as well as to local production. We need to focus on our industrial policy to enhance economic growth <clears throat> and we need to add value to our minerals through beneficiation to generate economic growth. We must be more targeted in the support that we provide to emerging businesses ranging from black industrialists to small medium enterprises and cooperatives. We need to look at the impact of this type of support that we have on offer and ensure that it reaches businesses in townships and rural areas. It was during the election campaign as we crisscrossed the length and the breadth of our country where we realized that there is a lacuna and a deep gap in the funding of businesses where our people live. The support of businesses in the rural areas in the urban areas. This is what this Lakota also needs to focus attention on. Through the Energy Action Plan, <clears throat> the ANC-led government has reduced the severity of load shedding and have enabled massive investment in new generation capacity. We are in the process of far-reaching reforms to establish a competitive energy market for the first time. And this, in many ways, will also lead to the lowering of the costs of living. The ANC government has similarly undertaken reforms that will increase investment in our ports and railways, improve efficiencies, increase competition and lower the cost of doing business as well. We must ensure that we fix our logistics sector so that it supports our economic and trade objectives. Through legislative, regulatory and operational changes, government has made substantial progress in telecommunications, in water, as well as in visa reform. As the Alliance, we know that poverty has many dimensions. While economic growth and job creation are critical to poverty reduction, government must use the resources and capabilities of the state in an integrated manner to tackle poverty. At this Lakota, we must discuss how government can use the social wage more effectively. By this we mean we must discuss how government can maintain and improve the provision of subsidized housing, transport, basic services to the poor in our country. We have seen how the special social relief grant of disaster that the ANC-led government introduced during COVID provided a lifeline to millions of South Africans, particularly in the context of rising prices. We need to examine how this grant can support the introduction of a sustainable form of income support for unemployed people. 
we need to appreciate the impact that a well-functioning <clears throat> and quality education system has both on reducing poverty and driving inclusive economic growth.